All right, talking a little bit more about domain and range. We talked a little bit about it during our functions versus relation conversation. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about it and talk more about the different notations for it. So we're going to deal with domain first, and then we'll move on down to range. So there's lots of different kinds of ways to write our domain. Um, we can write domain in the roster form that we talked about last time. You can write your domain in interval notation, and you can also write your domain in set builder notation. Uh, it just depends on how your relation or function is being given to you. That determines how it is that you're going to write your answers for it. So first off, a domain is a set of all possible x values of a function, but it is also known as our independent variable. Your domain is your independent variable, um, which we talk about more and more as we get into word problems, but we also talk about it here. Independent variables are the ones that you can't really control. So um, if we're dealing with word problems, a lot of times your independent variable is your time because time moves on whether you want it to or not, you can't control it. So your domain are all the possible X values, also known as your independent values. Um, the other names would be independent X values. Um, domain X intercepts. No, well, no, no, X intercepts is not really the one we want to look for. So those are really kind of it. There are other ones that as they pop up, we'll talk about them. So if you have your domain written as ordered pairs, a table, or what we call a discrete graph, a discrete graph is not connected. As you can see, our discrete graph here are just sets of points. Those are your discrete graphs. Whereas over here on the other side, we have continuous graphs. So as you can see, these all flow together. These are our continuous graphs here. So looking at our ordered pair up here, our domain again are your X values. So this, because our domain is listed as points, we would use roster form to list out our domain. You can't use interval here because interval says that it goes from here to here and it's not connecting from here to here. It's just these points. So it's just zero, it's just one, it's just two, it's just three. It's nothing in between those values. So we would use our roster form for that. So roster form, I always think of a sports team whenever I talk about roster form because a sports team, their roster is their list of players. So here my roster are my list of domain values that I am using. For my table, our domains are those X's. So for this table, my X's are all up top. Again, we want to go in order from least to greatest. So my domain for that table is 0, 4, 8, and 12. For our discrete graphs, you want to find what those x values are, where your points are. And again, you're going to use your roster form to write it. So my domain here would be negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, and four, because I have points where x is a negative one, where x is a zero, where it's a one, two, three, and a four. Same thing with this discrete graph over here. So our domain here would be one, two, three, four, negative five, negative two, positive one, and four. So it's the 
x portion of those points. That is your domain. So our continuous graph, that is when we want to use either interval notation or set builder notation. That's when we're going to want to use one of those two. So for my graph here, my x values start over here at 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. And it stops here at 3. Okay. So for this one, these ones are different because it's fluid. It's connecting. It's using every single value in between of those. So again, we would use either interval notation, which would be, I forgot my number already, negative 5 with a bracket because it's got a closed point right there, all the way up to positive 3. And again, closed circle, so that's going to be a bracket. My interval notation for number six would be one, two, three, four, negative four to two. And again, there's not an open circle on the ends of that ellipse there. So those are going to be brackets. Now our new one, our set builder notation. Um, I didn't really leave much room here. So I'm going to write my set builder for graph number five up here above it. So our domain here, our set builder always starts with these squigglies. Because I'm starting, and I'm talking about my domain values here, I'm going to use the letter X because domain is our X values. So you identify which variable you're looking at. We're looking at our X's, and this bar is just kind of stands for such that. So this is saying X such that, and then we write what it is that the X values are equal to. Our set builder notation uses our inequality notation that we talked about last unit. So this would be negative 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 3 because they are closed circles. So that's why it's got the equal to. And you always go smallest number to largest number. So over here for graph 6, x such that negative 4 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. So our set builder, which are our squiggly braces, and our interval notations are used for continuous graphs, graphs that are connected and use every single point in between them. So same thing is true for our range. So our range are all possible y values. These are our dependent variables. Y values. So Ys are dependent on whatever X it is that you input to the function. So you can't figure out your range value until you know what your domain is because they're connected to each other. So these are the same points as above. Our range here is just the Y values with it. So when it's an ordered set of pairs here, we write them in roster form, just like we did with our domain, only we're looking at our range values this time instead. So three, five, seven, nine. In our tables, we're looking at our Y values for our range. Again, this is going to be in roster form because they just listed out points in the form of a table. Our discrete graphs, again, roster form, you're just looking for the Y values that go with those points. So here we got 1, 2, 3, negative 5, negative 3, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. So you're looking at the Ys. You're always going lowest to highest. So for number four, we're going to go negative two, and my squiggly's in there, negative two, zero, two, and four. Same process as with your domain, only we are looking at 
the y's instead. And then for our continuous graph, again, you're going to look for the highest and you're going to look for your lowest. So our lowest is 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5 times positive 5. So my range in the interval would be negative 5, 4. In set builder, this time it's going to be a y such that because we are looking at our range, so we are looking at our y values there. And then the same thing with our ellipse here. So that goes from negative one to three, negative one to three in interval, and set builder y such that negative one is less than or equal to y, is less than or equal to three. So again, interval, set builder, roster form those are all just different ways to be able to list your points within that set and in this instance our set is either our domain or our range values so we're going to do more practice with this in class